how does um how do how does a young cat make the transition into the barbering world? You took uh, your first love was basketball. Um, that didn't work out. I, what what stopped you ultimately was it injury or something like that? No, just what stopped me from uh going you know professional with basketball was me. Um, uh, my commitment level. Um, once I you know uh, got out of the streets and stuff. Um, consistency, work ethic. Uh, all of those things wasn't a, a total package to evolve me to get to where I was. But if I was that young guy and I stayed with that and rose above all the things that were going on around me, friends, trouble, we this, this, and that, and I held on to that consistency and work ethic, then, yeah, I could have got to that level. So basically it was me. So you kind of got in your own way. Right. Okay, so the basketball thing didn't work out. Well, what is the next step? For Cam, as far as his career choice, what makes him want to step into the barber game? Um, I used to have this uh, barber named Bob when I was uh, a young kid back in Cyprus, and then he used to take paper food stamps from payments, <laughs> <laughs> and he used to give you the sauciest haircuts, man. I mean, he uh, shout out to Bob. yeah, shout out to Bob, man. He used to cut your hair for five dollars in cash or. Ten dollars in food stamps, you know. However, you can work it out. He was always saucy. Everybody always loved him. And um, this was in Oakland. Yeah, this was in Oakland as a child. And I just, ever since then, I think that's when I, you know, it was there for me to look at and have an example of. So what made me want to become a barber was those little things like that. I can look back and and see that barbers are were were well respected. They were, you know, funny guys. They were everything that was a barber that underlined the barber to me made me become a barber. Okay, so you were just impressed by the career. Exactly. And the life. Right, right, right. And they, they get their cash right then. It was the same as me standing on a corner right. getting my cash right then, you know. But what this is more for sure and is 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 that the health benefits and the time benefits are, you know, are extremely uh good for you. It's a lot safer. A lot safer. You get into the barber game, right? Tell me something that the the young barber, or the young barber mentality, had to learn. So, what did you have to learn as a young barber that allowed you to have the longevity you've had in it? Work ethic. Work ethic. I, I think I got, I was around some uh, some guys that had a work ethic. Uh, G, uh, he's a well-known barber in Modesto and Ernesto. He's a um, well-known barber. And those two guys, along with uh, Vic, took me under their wing and uh, they taught me a lot about, you know, consistency and uh, how to run up a, you know, a check, you know, cutting hair. You have, and you had uh, mentors to help you guide you through, but um, ultimately, I think I would agree with you that it's the work ethic that will yeah. take you to the next level. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what's the what's the couple things that you love about being a barber? I mean, you want a couple? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love number one the 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 people. I love uh, the social. At number one, I always get to talk to somebody. Um, they always get to talk to me. You know. Um, very helpful in, in advice and things like that. And, you know, sometimes I need advice. And then you meet a lot of different people that come from different career backgrounds, doctors, lawyers, janitors. I mean, I mean, you pretty much, you know, uh, give a service to everyone. Um, number two, I would have to say I like make people look good. I like to see my art on other people or their idea, and then I put that idea into what they're actually going to wear around. And uh, other people see that, and then they ask them who cut their hair. So have you ever noticed that, let's say you're at a basketball game or a concert or even out on dinner, that you look at people's hair and inside your mind you're thinking how you could have did it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do that all the time. Well, that, that, I mean, when you be, uh, you know, been a barber for so long now, when people walk past you, like, Menard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you become the super critiquer. You'd be like, I'm kind of high 
Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, there's so much new stuff going around. I I can't tell a hairpiece from a a good haircut or you know a, a magicianry from. A, I, I I can't tell no more. So. What's your view on enhancements? Are you with them or are you against them? Well, you know, I'm I'm with them if if they're needed. You know, I'm, I think if you have a, a a quick date and you know you're going on that date, you should you know get enhanced if you're going to use that, and then you let that person know the next day that that wasn't your real head because <laughs> <laughs> because if a female female did that to you. No, nah, you gotta just you know you maybe maybe you know you let her see you before you go get it again. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you just ease her into you know a ball spot versus being like, well, I actually had a ball spot right here, but the paint covered it up. Right. So, what is your thoughts on doing it as a barber? Is that a discussion you have with your clients, or you just do it on your own? Um, no, no. I, uh, I'm not uh, uh, an enhancement type of barber. I'm kind of, you know, traditional, but I mean, to each his own. I mean, that that's another service. If the customer wants it, then I mean, why why would you say no? Just make sure you um, at the top of your game doing that enhancement so you can, you know, get the residuals of other people seeing that one that same enhancement. Right. So pretty much it's like upon request. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not just like, damn, this guy's fucked up right here. Let me line him up. With or you can, you can, you can, you can say, hey, uh, would you like me to? And then, you know, you can give them an example if you have some pictures of you doing an enhancement for another customer that you can show them, you know, and then they say, oh, yeah, that is nice. Yeah, I want to try that this time. You know, so yeah, you can always upsell what you what you. And one of the reasons that you have that discussion is because you charge them more for that too, right? <laughs> that's that's a reason. Or you, <laughs> my reasoning would be just to improve their look. To make sure that they going out in the field with their player card all strong. You know? okay. got it, got it. On top of getting my, you know. On top of getting that extra, yeah, that little, extra little cash. Okay. But, and um, do you cut your own hair or do you have another person cut your hair? Um, I'm, I've been hopping around now. So I've just been, you know, on Instagram with local barbers. And if I see somebody do a nice haircut, I'll go over there and try their hair out. So I'm pretty much at this point just a, you know, barber guinea pig. And then um, as people cut my hair, I, you know, pick up, you know, what they, what they do. Right. Just in case I need to apply it to my game, you know, after they give you. Use your own haircut necessity as a form of network. Right. That's very smart as a business. But I like, I like to cut my own hair still. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm good. So, um, I mean, this could just be me, but do you ever, uh, you you shave your face with the razor? Do you ever cut yourself with the razor? Which one? Your, 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 like your lineup. Cause, nah, no. Nah. Because me, every time I cut somebody else, like I, I shave somebody else, I'm good. But if I go to try and line myself up with a razor, I always catch myself somehow. You need to get know. you a barber. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I need to stop doing it myself. Right, right, yeah. right. It's too many young kids out here in uh, the Modesto area that cut good Latin hair. You know what I mean? It's not a lot that cut great ethnic people hair. So, you know, you've got to. I mean, I could line the next person up, but just my own. Yeah. I always. It's always like that, though. <clears throat> okay, so um, so do you ever attend like barber battles and stuff like that? As far how deep into the barber game are you as far as a a, a business owner out in Modesto with your barber shop aspect? Well, I'm not. I'm not even. I'm. A, I'm a surface guy as far as the barber game goes. I haven't been going to a lot of barber battles or you know showcasing out a lot of barber battles and things like that just because. Um, you know, uh, the the height of the barber battle for me, a barber uh, lifestyle for me, kind of got taken down by Corona. You know, at that time, you know, it was no ceiling on a barber game. And then when everything reopened, you have a bunch of, you know, different things. And, you know, everybody has their own barbershop. Everybody has their own PPP loan. You know, it's kind of like nobody worked together no more. So um, it, it kind of... It kind of, you know, ruined the way I looked at barbering for a little while. So, so COVID strikes again. It was, I mean, you know, barbers keep barbers going. You know, you know. Um, I just think that, yeah, COVID strikes again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, let's they, just blame it on they, COVID. Yeah, they hit us from so many angles with that COVID. Yeah, it was just. Yeah. So, okay. So, 
Um, but, but I mean, that's very honest of an answer. You know what I mean? Most people would lie and say, yeah, I go to every battle and I do all the expos. And they lie. Yeah, I mean, it's some, it's something that do. Right. It's something that do. It's something that do. And they have trophies from doing that because there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Well, hey, to each their own, right? Congratulations right. with your, your uh, appreciation trophy.